so I'll mainly be working these on math lab today, but I'm going to give you the the definitions first, and then we'll go and uh, do them on the math lab. Because these are looking at graphs and playing with graphs and stuff. So first, y'all, 7.1 deals with symmetry. And remember, symmetry is when uh, two sides of something look the same. Like the human body, if you cut us down the center, they say our bodies are symmetric. So that's what they're talking about on that. All right, y'all, let me catch up, see who all came in real quick. Okay. All right, y'all, so there's three types of symmetry we'll look at. So the first one is when a graph is symmetric to the y-axis. So to see if a graph is symmetric to the y-axis, if folding the graph over the y-axis, and the graph lands on itself. Now, if it's symmetric to the y-axis, we often, we also call that an even function. And um, even functions, because usually the ones that are symmetric to the y-axis have even exponents, okay? So let me give you an example of a graph that's symmetric to the y-axis. So our parabola that we've been drawing, notice if I take the right side of my graph and folded it over the y-axis, this right side would land on this left side. So that's what we're talking about up here. If I fold it over that y-axis and it lands on itself. So that right there, symmetric to your y-axis. The second one is what we call symmetric to the x-axis. And I check it the same way, but now I'm folding it over my x-axis. So if folding the graph over the x-axis, and the graph lands on itself. Okay, so an example of the x-axis. So that could be, say, a sideways graph here. So if I took the top of this graph and folded it right over the x-axis, my top half here would land on my bottom half. Okay. So y-axis, you're folding over the y. X-axis, you're folding it over the x. Now notice, symmetric to the y-axis was an even function. But y'all, if it's symmetric to the x-axis, remember, 
it's not even a function because it fails that vertical line test. But the next one will be what we call the odd function. And y'all, this one is what we call symmetric to the origin. And y'all remember the origin is the area where the two axes intersect. So the center of that graph is what we call the origin. So to be symmetric to the origin, if rotating the graph, one hundred and eighty degrees, and we end up with the same graph. Okay, so to be symmetric to the origin, I'm going to take my graph, I'm going to turn it upside down, which is 180 degrees, and if I end up with the same graph, it is symmetric to that origin. Now, the ones that are symmetric to the origin are often called a odd function. So these graphs will usually have odd exponents if you're looking at the expressions. So y'all watch this, an example of symmetric to my origin would be a graph going uphill, left to right, comes through the center, and continues up. Look at this graph. It's going uphill, left to right. Now I'm going to turn this page for a second. And y'all look at this graph. After I turned it upside down 180 degrees, it looks like the same graph. It's going uphill, left to right, and it goes right through that origin there, okay? So same picture. When I turn my page upside down. So these are the three types of symmetry. So we're going to go to math lab now and I'll let y'all help me answer these questions. So let me share the math lab. All right, y'all, let me make this a little bigger for you. So y'all should be seeing my number one. So y'all, the question is, and y'all, y'all can tell me instead of chatting if you want to, just unmute yourself. But I want to know, is this graph symmetric to the x-axis? Is there no symmetry, the origin, or the y-axis? The origin? The origin, definitely. Because, y'all, if we flip that thing upside down 180 degrees, it's going to be the same picture. Okay? So, good job. That is definitely the origin. All right, so let's make this one bigger. All right, same thing. X-axis, both the X-axis and Y-axis. The Y-axis or the origin? The Y-axis. The Y-axis. Perfect, because if I fold it over my Y-axis, that right half is landing exactly on the left half. So we go with the Y-axis. Yes. So this one's asking us questions. First, it says, is it symmetric to the x-axis? Yes or no? Yes. All righty. So y'all would hit answer on that one. Now it says, is it symmetric to the y-axis? No. No. Good job. Is it symmetric to the origin? No. No, because if I turn it upside down, 
instead of looking like a greater than, it'll look like a less than. So it won't be the same picture. So that'll be a no also. All right, so let's make this one a little larger. So remember, they want to know if it's odd, even, or neither. Remember, even is symmetric to the y-axis. Odd is symmetric to the origin. So for this picture, is this even, odd, neither? Even. All right, so we're going to go A. And I'll tell you another trick. See, it touches that x-axis two times. So if it touches the x-axis an even number of times, that's another way you can tell if it's even, okay? All right, so let's see. Girl, you're almost 100% on this thing. <laughs> hey, y'all, even, odd, or neither? Odd. Ah, uh, definitely. So make it to the origin. And also look at this. It touches it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. So it touches it nine times, which is odd. So we choose A. And we're done. So y'all, that's 7.1. Five questions on messing with those graphs, okay? So now let me go back to do 7.2 here. Go back to my pad. All right, so for 7-2, we look at transformations. So transformations, we're going to take what, what we call basic graphs, and we're going to see what make some shift right, left, up, down, and we're going to even reflect them over the x-axis. So before I give you the actual transformations, we're going to look at the basic graphs. So there's seven basic graphs that they might move around. Um, but on these problems, when when we look at the problems, they're going to want us to know what the basic graph is they started with. So y'all, let's draw these seven graphs and keep up with these because you'll use these for the homework and then you'll have to know them when you do the review and the test, okay? So the first basic graph is the basic line graph and it shoots straight up through that origin. Straight line, the most basic line graph is y equals x. Okay, so when x is one, y is one, x is two, y is two, x is three, y is three, and so on. Second graph, is our parabola. And remember the parabolas, we got them graphs when we did the x squareds. So the basic x squared graph is our second one. Okay, the third basic graph Is the squiggly line when it comes up, cuts through the middle, and goes up. We got these when we deal with the x cubes. Remember, the even exponents are still symmetric to the y, and the odd exponents are still symmetric to the origin. Now, this fourth one, we're not going to have to know how to graph it yet. Um, but this one comes down on the left side and shoots down towards negative infinity. And then this right side comes in and goes down. 
This is the y equals one over x. Now we won't have to graph this. They'll give us pictures of this one. And we'll learn more about this kind of graph when we hit material for the third test. Um, but y'all, where this part's going down and then this part's sort of going up, that's what we call a vertical asymptote. And it occurs where a, where a fraction is undefined. So remember, the only number X cannot be for this problem would be zero. So that's why this graph can't cross over that zero on the X axis, because it's undefined there. So what it'll do is it'll just keep going, going on and on forever towards negative infinity. And then this side will keep going up towards positive infinity. So that's why it sort of looks like that, because of that zero making it undefined. Now, you don't have to know all that now. You just got to know what this shape looks like, okay? Because we do consider that one one of our seven basic graphs here. All right, y'all, the next one, y'all have seen this one. Looks like a V. So remember the V-shaped graphs were our absolute value of X. Next graph. So this one sort of goes to the right and slowly goes uphill. This is Y equals the square root of X. And it only occurs on the positive X's. Because remember, over here would be negative X's. And we cannot take square roots of a negative X in the real world. Remember, when you put negative numbers under a square root, that's when y'all would get those imaginary numbers. And we'll even play with imaginary numbers in the future. But just remember, square roots can only occur on the positive X's. Now, this very last one, It slowly goes up to the right, but it also slowly comes down on the left. This one is y equals the cube root of x. So a cube root can be negative because like a cube root of negative 8 would be negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 would get me a negative eight. So the cube roots can be with negative X's and positive, where the square roots cannot be negative, okay? So those are our basic graphs. And those are the ones we're gonna play with moving around. So there's three transformations we're gonna look at. First transformation is a vertical shift. Y'all you know, remember, vertical shift is going to be either up or down. So to make a graph have a vertical shift, you would have y equals f of x plus or minus some number. If this B is positive, so if that B is positive, then that graph will go up. And if the number at the end is negative, then my graph will go down that number. So here's an example of each of those. If I had y equals 
x squared plus 2. So notice you got your basic graph, your x squared graph, and we're adding 2 to the end of it. This is going to move the x squared graph up 2 units. Okay, so it'll take it from being under origin here, and it'll shift it up two units, okay? Likewise, y'all, if we had y equals x cubed minus 4. So here's my x cubed graph. So by subtracting 4 from it, it's going to take this x cubed graph and bring it down four units. So that one will move the x cubed graph down four units. So that's your vertical. Next, we'll go left or right. So that will be a horizontal shift. Oh, y'all, hang on just one second here. All right, horizontal shift will be y equals f of x plus or minus some number. And y'all notice the difference here. We had our function, and we just added or subtracted a number from it. This means that we're changing the x values by adding or subtracting a from the x values before it gets evaluated. So basically, if the number is in parentheses with the x, it's going to do a horizontal. If the number is outside of the function at the end, it's going to be the up or down. And y'all, horizontal is also a little backwards from what you think. On this one, if A is positive, if A is positive number being added to my X, it's going to move my graph to the left. You think it'd go right, but it actually moves it left because you're changing the X values. And then if A is negative, that will shift my graph to the right. So let's say I had uh, Y equals X plus five, squared. So notice up here, the x squared graph, I added 2 to it, it moved it up. This is an x squared graph because I got the exponent 2, but the 5 is being added to the x before it's being squared, okay? To where up here, you're squaring your x and then adding the 2. So what this will do, this is going to move my x squared graph Remember, we said if A is positive, it's going to move it left. So this will move X squared graph left five units. All right, I could have Y equals, how about the square root X minus two. So here's the thing. If the number's under the radical, you would treat it like it's in parentheses, okay? Now, they're not going to give you the parentheses, but you treat it like it's in parentheses when it's under that radical. So since we're subtracting 2 from the x, before we take the square root, that's going to move our square root of x graph right to units.
Now, for this one to, to say go up or down, you would have to have the square root of x and then minus the 2. If the minus 2 is outside the radical, then that would move it down 2. Okay, so remember the difference. Inside the radicals like parentheses, outside the radical. Okay, so just remember. Number three. Number three is what we call reflection over the x-axis. So y'all, that'll be like y equals negative f or x. Which means if I put a negative in front of my function, it's going to take this function like this parabola here. If I made that a negative x squared, it's going to turn that parabola over and it's going to reflect it over that x-axis so that all these positive y values now become negative y values. So y equals negative. Oh, let's see. How about negative absolute value x? Because remember, absolute value always comes out positive. But if I put a negative in front of the absolute value, it's going to turn all these positive values into negative values. So it would take my absolute value and flip it right over that x-axis. So this reflects absolute value of x graph over x-axis. So these are the three transformations. Now notice, we did not say anything about a y-axis. We will do that, oh, like on our fourth test material. So right now, the only axis you're reflecting over is the x-axis. And so y'all, these uh, there's like seven or eight of these. So I want to show y'all how to do these on MATLAB because they're sort of tricky. So I'm going to go back to our math lab here. <laughs> so I'll sort of help us do one or two of these, and then I'll let y'all sort of work. So I want to know how the function can be obtained from one of my basic graphs. So remember, I'm inside the parentheses and one. So I'm in there with that X. Now remember, when I'm inside that X and I add or subtract numbers, I'm going left or right. If I add a number, I'm going to go left. If I subtract a number inside parentheses, I'm going right. So y'all, since we're adding one to the X inside the parentheses, we know this is going to go left one unit. So I would come down here to the one that says one unit to the left, which would be D. And they want to know what graph we're starting with. So since we set exponent 2 on this, we know that's going to be the x squared graph. So we got to put in the x squared graph there. And then we choose D. You're going to check the answer. Then it's going to make us graph it. So let me click to enlarge the graph. Now remember, the x squared graphs were the parabola looking one, the U-shaped one. So if you go on to it, it says x squared tool. Now, watch what I do. I'm going to click on the tool, and then I'm just going to click anywhere on my graph. Once you click on the graph, it's going to draw the basic graph. And it's going to start it at the origin in the middle. You see this little box that popped up on the right side? Um, we don't have to worry about vertical stretch and shrink, horizontal stretch and shrink. We don't even mess with that in this class. We're worried about the vertical shift, horizontal shift, 
And then in the bottom left, you see reflect over the X axis. So if we got a reflection, we click that. Now, we're not going to use the Y axis at all, so ignore that one. So remember, my graph did a horizontal shift left. So I come in here and I grab this little cursor on the horizontal shift and I drag it to the left one unit. When I drag that left, it moved my graph from the origin to negative one. So now that my graph has been moved one unit, I save it and we check our answer. And y'all all make it a little bigger so you can see that it did move left one unit. And then check our answer and we go to the next one. All right, so this is g of x equals x minus three. So this is the y equals x line graph. And we're subtracting three from the end of it. So remember, when I subtract three from the end of it, that's going to move me up or down. So since it's being subtracted, it's going to move me down three units. So I would pick C. And then my graph that I start with was the Y equals X. So y'all, we check that. Now, this is the only one that you actually have to graph using two points. But remember, it used to go straight through the center. But after we graph our two points, it's going to move it down those three units, okay? So remember, to graph a line, click the line tool. All right, let's pick two x values. If we put a zero in for x, 0 minus 3 would give me a negative 3. So I'm going to go to 0, negative 3. Click that. And then let's say I put a, a 1 in there. 1 minus 3 gives me negative 2. So I go to 1, negative 2. Click my second point. But y'all look at that. When I plotted those two points, my line no longer goes through the origin. It shifted it down those three units. So the line one is the only one you physically got to graph. The rest of them will click the tool, click the graph, and then we'll move it left to right using their buttons, okay? All right, y'all, so here we got the 1 over x graph, minus 4. So h of x equals 1 over x minus 4. 1 over x is one of my four base, my seven basic graphs. So the question is, subtracting 4 at the end of it, what's it doing to that 1 over x graph? Wait, can you repeat that? Okay, so we got h of x equals 1 over x minus 4. So what we want to know is, what is that minus 4 doing to our graph? It's going to move it down. It's going to move it down. And see, they're telling you you're starting with the 1 over x. So remember, it's not in there with that x. It's at the end, so it's going to shift it down. So y'all are going to check that answer. Now this one, they're giving you three pictures and I'm going to make them a little larger for you. I think I can make them a little bit larger. So remember, the basic graph would have been C on here. The one I drew y'all for your basic graph looks like C. But what I got to figure out, which one of those three graphs looks like it moved four units down. A. A, there you go. So it looks like A went down, B went up, and then C was the actual graph, okay? So that one, they gave you pictures. All righty. So on this one, we got G of X equals negative. X minus four in parentheses 
cubed. So the first thing I want to ask y'all, the X minus four in the parentheses, what's that doing? It's going to move to the right. It's going to move it to the right. And then how about that little negative in the very front? Going to make it reflect over the x-axis. There you go. So so let me find one y'all said right and reflect over the x. Looks like D here. Good job. Now, what graph am I starting with? Would it be x cubed? X cubed. Good job. X and then let me make my cube there. Now, so we automatically know A and C ain't the answer because they got Y-axis on those two. So the only two choices would have been B and D because they're the only two that had the X-axis. All right, so y'all watch this. We're going to have to graph this thing. So let me click it. So the cube graph is the squiggly line, the second one on the second row. So click that and click anywhere on that graph. It's going to put it right through the center. So remember, we had two moves. You said I went right four. So go to your horizontal shift and put that over to four. So see it move my graph right, those four units. Now y'all watch this. That graph is going uphill left to right, but I'm going to click that reflect over the x-axis and watch. Whoops. It now goes downhill left to right. So it reflected it right over my X. So we would save that. And then check our answer. So y'all, these aren't bad. You just got to get used to that math lab, uh, putting these things in there and actually moving them around. Alrighty, so g of x equals x plus 5 squared plus 4. So we're starting with the graph of f of x equals what? x squared. x squared. Let me get that square on it. All right, then you see it says shift it blank 5 units. That's either going to be left, down, up, or right. To the and left in parentheses. Uh-huh. So you said you was right. It I thought you said left, didn't you? Yeah, Mr. Ref, on to the left since it's in parentheses. Yeah, because it's in parentheses and then shift it blank four. Uh did up. Up four. There you go. So really the only ones that are sort of opposite what you think are the ones in the parentheses. You just gotta remember plus is left. Minus is right, but y'all that end number, up is plus, down is negative. All right, so that's perfect on that one. So we're going to check that. And then we get to graph it. So let's click this. All righty, so we're going to grab the U-shade X squared tool. Click anywhere on the graph. It's going to stick it in the middle. So for that left five, I'm going to go to my horizontal and I'm going to move it over here to negative five. So there's your move left. And then you said, what was it, up four? So vertical shift, move that to positive four. And y'all, there you go. My graph went left and up. So we're going to save that and check. All right, here's one of my tricky ones. Now, I did do an example of this one, but f of x equals the square root of x plus 8. Now, they're telling us we're starting with the square root of x. So what we want to know, that plus 8 inside that radical going to make me go right, left, up, or down.
Now, y'all remember one thing. When it's under that radical, you're going to treat it the like it, it's going to be in parentheses. So you're definitely going left. So on this one, you got to tell it left. And then you got to put eight in that box for the units. So, yeah, it's like parentheses under it, okay? So we check that. Now, they don't make you graph this one. They're going to make you pick a picture. So we got A, B, C, or D. So which one of those four graphs looks like it went left? B. I think you said B, right? Yeah, B is in boy. B is in boy. Yeah, A went down. B went left like we wanted, C went right, and then D looks like it went up. So good job on that one. All righty, y'all. So I got a cube root of X plus five. How can that be obtained from the cube root of X? So is that plus five units right, left, up, or down. And the one thing y'all want to remember on this one, that plus five is not under the radical, so it's not in parentheses. It's going to go up. It's going to go up. So let's see. That's what uh, C. Now this one are nice. They give you pictures on this one. So y'all just got to figure out A, B, or C, which one went up. A. All right, so I'm going to click A. So it looks like A went up, B went down, and C is the basic graph. Okay, so definitely A on that one. And y'all look at that, you just got one more to go. G of X equals negative X minus four squared plus six. So this one has all three moves on it. So usually they'll start with the parentheses, then they'll do the negative, and then they'll do that number at the end. So let's see the first move they say. Are you going left four? Right six, right four, or left six? So it looks looks like they're focusing on the horizontal. Right shape. four. Perfect. So right four. All right. Then you're going to reflect it across the x-axis or y-axis. X-axis? X-axis. Remember, that's the only one we even reflected anything over, okay? So any of these questions, then it says Y-axis. You don't choose that Y-axis at all, okay? So it's only X-axis in this section. And then shift it blank units uh, up four, down six, up six, down four. Up six. Up six. All right, y'all, then you would check that answer. And guess what? That's all of them. So do y'all want to try any more of them, or are y'all good? Yeah, can we just try, like, a couple more? Yeah, I, gotta, I, I should be showing another one up here on y'all. So y'all now have g of x equals negative x minus 7 squared plus 3. So let's see what they want to know now. We're starting with an x squared graph. So you're going to shift that left 7, right 3, right 7, or left 3? To the right 7. All right, so right 7. Then you're going to reflect it across the X or Y axis. X axis. 
And then you are going to shift it blank. Up seven, down three, up three, down seven. Up three. All right, so y'all are good on that. One. So let me slide back here to number one again. All right, y'all got y equals x plus four squared. So what is that plus four doing to our graph? Because we got to pick A, B, C, or D on this. You need to go on four units left, four units up, Four units right or four units down? You're going four units to the left. All right, so we pick A. And then what graph am I starting with? X squared. X squared. So I got my X. Let me square that. All right, let's see how y'all are doing. Good on that. Oh, we didn't graph it yet. Well, okay, so I guess I'll graph it. That was x plus 4 squared. So remember, grab your U-shape x squared tool, click, and y'all said 4 left, so we're going to take that horizontal to negative 4. And then we'll save that and check. All right, so I'm wanting to go to... Is it not that? Well, that's not bad. Three. All right. So you got h of x equals one over x plus six. They're telling you starting with the one over x graph. So what did that plus six do to my graph? Made it go up six units. Okay. So bam, there we go. Now this member gives you the three pictures to choose. So did A, B, or C go up six? C is in Charlie. All righty. Yeah, it looks like A went down and B is my basic graph, really. Oh, that was not bad. I wanted to go to, let me think. I think it's five I want y'all to try. Not five. Let me try six. I'm going to get one of them radicals. All right, y'all. F of X equals square root X minus seven. So they're telling you, hey, you're starting with the square root of X, but then you're going to shift it left, up, down, or right. To the left. Oh, no, 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 to the right, to the right, because it's negative. Okay, okay, there you go. Definitely to the right, and then that'd be, what, uh, seven on there? Yeah. It's tricky on that horizontal, but once you get used to it being the opposites, then you're good to go. All right, so A, B, C, or D, who went right? A. A, there you go. And see, it looks like they're going to make one right, one left, one up, and one down on that one every time. All right, so y'all try one more, and then I think y'all be ready. So they're telling you a cube root of x minus 6. You're starting with the cube root of x. So what did that minus 6 do to this graph? Moved it down. Moved it down. Good job. So y'all are getting used to that idea now, right? Under the radical one way, outside the radical another way. All right, let's see what y'all pick on this picture. Let's see. A, B, or C. C. C, there you go. That went down. So A went up. B is my basic graph. And then C went down. So y'all, that's all. So y'all got this. Y'all are knocking them out, okay? So remember your 
three transformations. And then remember, is this stuff inside the parentheses or is it outside my parentheses? And then remember on that reflection, it's only going to reflect over the X axis in this section, okay? Like I said, it's way at the end of the year test four material before we play at that Y axis, okay? Is this due next week or this week? Uh, This is due Sunday night, but focus on that test, okay? Because homework can be due after you can work the homework after the due dates technically, but that test has to be done by Sunday night. So that's why I sort of kept it light. Okay. Um, seven, one, y'all breeze through it. Hopefully then, hopefully now seven, two, you can breeze through those graphs. Cause I really want you to focus on that test. Um, homework. I won't see y'all again till what Tuesday. So if you have to, knock that test out by Sunday. And if you got to, play with the homework Monday. Um, that way you'll at least be caught up with me and then come in Tuesday morning. We're going to start on the next section. So y'all, it's not bad. You just uh, focus on y'all's test. Now, the scores I've been seeing have been pretty good on that test, so do that study guide, get a good grade on it, then knock out my test, okay? And then we did a video, uh, oh, when was we here? Tuesday morning, we did a video going over the test, and remember, we put stuff in math lab and all that stuff for that, in the case. so it shows you how to do them on the calculator. We did stuff on math lab and all that, okay? I got another question. What does the uh, quiz count, the study guide count as, as a quiz or? It's a quiz. All right. Yeah, and it's only 5%. Um, so it's not going to kill you. Um, but I would probably do the quiz till I at least got a 70 probably. Once I got a 70 on it, I'd be ready for the test and try to knock it out. Um, so y'all just get your confidence and y'all will do fine. Just like this homework we just did. I mean, y'all breezed right through it. So knock it out. Cause y'all can probably knock out that homework pretty quick and then focus on that test. Okay. Or focus on your test and then do your homework that probably quicker on homework if you do it when it's fresh in your head. So y'all, I don't really have nothing else. So what questions do y'all have? So remember, we're in week five now, right? Week five of school. So um you are going to get to start picking your classes, I think, on October. It's either October 2nd or October 5th, okay? That's when you're going to start picking your spring classes. So sort of think about what you are going to take in the spring, and then you'll see your advisors and get signed up and all that fun stuff. Or you all can sign yourselves up without going through the advisor if you sort of know what your classes you're needing, okay? All right, y'all. So, anything else? All right, y'all. So, I'm going to quit my recording. It won't take long on this 